It's May 21st and I just wanted to do a little bit of a garden tour video uh, both to serve as my own personal garden journal because I have been doing a really bad job about writing this stuff down um, and also just for you guys if anybody else happens to stumble upon this and is curious about Pacific Northwest organic no-till gardening. So I'm going to start down here at the greenhouse and go from there. So, so far in the greenhouse we don't have any of the beds planted and as you can see we don't have the water lines laid out but we do have um, some tomato starts and pepper starts that I picked up from the local plant sale this uh, last weekend. Um, I didn't have time to start my own starts this year because we just moved it back into our place a week ago. Um, so I am uh, starting with somebody else's starts, um, but I did get these going and um, the lettuces and kale and beets are coming up nice. Uh, got some basil coming up in there. I just today, um, May 21st, plant planted a couple uh, leftover seeds of the pickle bush cucumber. We, I planted some out in the outdoor beds as well, but I had some left over, so I figured I'd get those going in the greenhouse. And we have a little basil that will get me by until these ones over here are harvestable. And then we're also um, taking cuttings and um, propagating autumn olive, plum, a few other things. Um, just things that we wanted to get. Oh look, I actually might be getting little nubbins on those. Bushes that we wanted to be able to cut back, but also wanted to be able to spread around the property and other places. So, some of the main things that we got done today, we got the tomatoes and peppers in the ground. Um, I actually made a video about just my process on transplanting those and some tips. I planted a couple different kinds of cucumbers in this bed here. Um, seeds are coming up like crazy. They usually start way earlier in the year and so it takes a little bit longer for gene, uh, seeds to germinate just because it's cooler but um, being that it's later in the year and the temperatures are warmer things are coming up really fast. So this bed here is one type of pea, this is another type of pea and then we have bush beans in this bed here with a salad mesclin mix going between the rows that will be harvested and out by the time the beans leave the room. I have a little miner's lettuce that I'm going to let go to seed so we get some more volunteers. This is another uh, different kind of fish beans that we have another mesclin mix going in with that. We have eggplant and this is where, this is my fruit bed so I've got the tomatoes, peppers, eggplant there as well as the seed, the cucumber seeds that I sowed today. Nothing in this half of this bed yet, but we do have some cabbage starts that we were given uh, from a friend, and so those are in the ground. Cilantro is not coming up just yet. I expect to be seeing that pop any day now. This is a bed of carrots with radish in between. we got a bed of beets coming up here. Another bed of carrots and radish. The greens are getting ready to bloom. And then these are, this is our raspberry patch. We had three different kinds in here. We had one variety here, one in between this section of posts, and then one in between this section of posts here. Two of the varieties didn't do too well, but this one down at the end uh, did very well and was spreading. And so we um, dug up some plants and have those planted in here about a foot. 18 inches apart and so just gonna fill out our bed raspberry bed that way I've got arugula in here as an under planting that's coming up really nice you can see there and then on this half of the bed I'm actually gonna under sow that with some chamomile so this is our composting yard usually we have chickens running in there but um, our chicks which I'll show you those. We just moved those outside into our little brooder pen. These ones don't have a mama, so they're basically just 
on their own. You can't see very well during it through that mesh, but we have a dozen there. I love this chick brooder. It does a really nice job just giving them a temporary home, although it's a little bit of a pain to get them to run up that ramp to be closed off for the evening. But we have the water hanging in there so that the chickens can't walk through it and get it all dirty. And then I have up here, oh, I've got it locked, but i got the food up here for right now just so that they're lured to come up inside and get comfortable with this space. These beds are still being weeded out and rehabbed. So we have some nice mature artichoke going on here and then also some artichoke seedlings that I think uh, our renters put in. Here's some barrage that's volunteering. I like to let barrage volunteer. It makes a nice tea and also edible flowers. This bed has been a little bit overwhelming. It's all I can do to not pull this garlic. Um, We've got garlic and onions in there, but it's completely taken over by weeds. We've decided to try and let this garlic make it until July when it can be harvested, although I don't expect to have very large bulbs. Again, it's May 21st, so it's got, I don't know, maybe five, six weeks to go on that. And then we will sheet mulch this whole thing, which is what we've got going over here. We just moved this, this old cold frame needs to go away. I haven't used it for years since that we built our little greenhouse, but this bed was completely grown over with woolly lamb's ear, bracken fern, and strawberries, and we just chopped it all, dropped it down. We're gonna put cardboard and compost over the top of that and have that ready to plant here in the next few months. We've been pruning back all the bushes, so this was completely overgrown, but it's now getting to be a little bit more under control. We've got a bunch of volunteer parsley in here, so this will be my parsley patch for a little while. This is kind of cool, this is a variegated parsley that's gone variegated. Woolly thyme is making a really great ground cover. I love how this this is spread really nice and is keeping the weeds down in that spot for sure. And then uh, the, we do have a patch of chamomile that has survived the overgrowing. Oh, and the guys are going to get the chainsaw going down the hill. And then we've got um, echinacea here. This is some lavage that's definitely doing very well. And I'll show you the hops. We'll see where the hops are at right now. These beds need to be completely um, gone through. These dogwoods were supposed to be cut back to the ground every year and those um, haven't been pruned in probably three years so they're kind of massive. But here's the hops so far. Everything is a mess right now because we're just doing massive maintenance on the house and getting things cleaned up. But you can see we've got uh, baling twine, black baling twine running from these crowns to the second story deck and then once those get uh, probably about three quarters of the way, once the hot vines get to be about three quarters of the way, then we'll run the twine from those hooks up to the peak and that's where we grow the hops. It actually makes it really nice because the hops will um, just hang down and be very easy to harvest. So, apple trees, much in need of pruning. Um, when we first moved in here, I completely beat back this lemon balm and the mint, but those have spread pretty rapidly again. We're gonna need to look for a solution for um, containing the lemon balm and the mint, because I, I want it here. I harvest a lot of it. Actually, I did a video on that about how I harvest lemon balm and mint for tea um, and so I love it for that but like it needs to I need to not have to be fighting it all the time so I'm uh, gonna be looking for a spot for that and these daylilies here they're getting ready to bloom those are actually an edible bud so 
Um, those usually come out about the same time as garlic scapes. And so here is May 21st and the buds are starting to come on. We'll be able to throw those in some stir fry with the garlic scapes. Um, Jim has, well, this is a, this is a thornless marionberry. So it's related to blackberry. It doesn't have any thorns. You can see it grows a lot the same way. There's a crown here and I did not realize this was going to get this big. Um, when I planted this, but it throws off 12 foot canes every year. And then uh, on the second year, when the year canes are at, at, on their second year, two years old, they'll throw off these side shoots and that's where it'll get berries. But we have got some, um, some of the tips buried in potting soil down here so we can root those and um, just uh, propagate those and get more of a berry patch going. This um, this is a purple choke cherry that my idea was to arborize it and so like kind of prune up the bottom so it just makes a nice top and it's a nice pretty plant but it spread like crazy so we dug out a bunch of these and Jim um, planted them down the hill in zone 5 just on the very edge of the property to make a bit of a living hedge and that's some of the key points for right now we're getting it back under control it's taking a little bit of time so uh, one last little note that I want to make is I am getting the drip lines uh, set up these are one gallon per hour drip emitters and I have the timer set up on 45 minutes every other day for right now because it's still we're getting rain every now and then but I'd rather it water deep and um, only be watered every other day and we'll switch it probably to every day uh, later in the season once it really starts to dry out because uh, July, August, September get to be pretty warm out here and we've got extremely good drainage on this soil so it doesn't hold water as well as I'd like it to but the more we add compost over the years the better it'll get. We're happy to be back on the little homestead and eating from it again so again May 21st Garden Journal uh, if you do happen upon this and you're curious, if you have any questions or comments or tips, um, this might look a little bit untidy, but we do like to uh, really apply a lot of permaculture uh, principles to our edible landscape plan. I do like to keep things a little bit tidy, but not overly tidy, and I also like to let things volunteer as much as possible, so um, less work, more food. No-till, organic, good stuff. Oh, I also transplanted some cabbages and kales in here. But, and we're letting our asparagus patch fern out for now. Okay, until next time, happy gardening.